All right, looks like we're live. Hi and welcome everyone. Good to have you here with us. My name is Minina Chao. I'm part of the SAP community team, your host today, and very happy to have Silvio Arcangeli with me. Uh, he's a second time community call speaker already, so quite an expert in that field, so you should know him already around. And he's back with strategy and latest updates for data integration at SAP. So uh, we'll hear from him, him in a moment. Just a few notes for you, since we're quite new here in YouTube. Uh, you see the chat, uh, feel free to post anything um, and questions, especially because we'll have some time at the end to, to cover them. With that, I'm very happy to hand over to you, Silvio. And uh, let's kick off the presentation. Thanks a lot, Menina. Thanks a lot for inviting me again. It's a pleasure to be here, guys. And I'm really looking forward to a lively exchange besides the, the presentation itself, let's say. So uh, uh, to start, of course, uh, and as always, uh, let's start first of all with a disclaimer. So uh, today it's a strategy call in particular. So I will be doing uh, quite a lot of vision statements and keep in mind that vision statements are vision statements. So plans can change uh, as always. Uh, Concerning the agenda, uh, we'll start with uh, uh, talking uh, about how the data integration leg of the SAP overall integration strategy is, uh, is outlined and, uh, and let's say how we evolved it. And then I will get into the product strategy more in detail and, uh, and some roadmap uh, in the end. So, but let's start from the beginning first. <clears throat> so SAP uh, has a vision that is, uh, is is, is always very oriented to business processes, as, uh, as you know. So we've got business processes in our heart. So uh, we want to enable the intelligent enterprise. We want to enable all of our customers, so huge customer base, uh, to uh, implement more intelligent, uh, more cost-effective, more innovative, and more uh, sustainable processes. And we want to leverage data and technologies in order to achieve that. So it's a, I think it's a, it's a quiet, um, peculiar vision because in our view, data and technology are always geared and focused in achieving business outcomes. So uh, we never talk about technology per se or, or with a pure bottom-up approach. And this uh, overall, uh, let's say, uh, uh, attitude applies also to our integration strategy. So we are releasing uh, an updated and, uh, and refreshed uh, SAP integration strategy. We have an integration strategy that covers end-to-end -end our portfolio. So uh, very wide and always very focused, as I, as I said earlier, on business outcomes, on, on impacting concrete uh, business processes that deliver real value in, in real life. So how does the integration strategy cover uh, the SAP technology portfolio. So let's start to get a little bit into uh, into uh, the uh, into the details. Let's say of uh, of the products that are uh, engaged and impacted uh, by our integration strategy. So as you can see, our view is that uh, we leverage the SAP business technology platform as the main layer that acts as a technology enabler for uh, delivering that view of the intelligent enterprise to our customers. And within the business technology platform, we have a suite of different services that are meant to cover all of the integration aspects end to end. So I think that this is also a very differentiating uh, picture because we think that in, in, in many cases, uh, innovative projects uh, and transformation initiatives fail because there's a lot of complexity uh, when it comes to operationalizing all of the transformations due to the complexity of integration. So that's always a, a big hurdle. We want to make sure that integration has to become an opportunity rather than an issue, right? So, and, and, and in order to achieve that, we have built this end-to-end -end vision where we combine together process integration. So uh, in this case, I'm talking about the middleware side of, uh, of, uh, of the house. So uh, SAP cloud integration, SAP API management, SAP integration advisor, SAP event mesh, of course, as the, uh, as the, as the messaging base to that. Those are the tools and services that you can use in combination for connecting transactional applications within themselves 
and for implementing end-to-end -end process workflows. And at the same time, uh, we also see SAP, the intelligence cloud, as one key component of that very same overarching suite because we think that integrating the data, feeding the analytics, and then taking those analytics back to the transactional stack is really part of the same picture. So in other words, process integration and data integration have to be there both and be used in combination. And I think that as far as I've seen, we are uh, probably the only major provider who has a unified suite that combines both process and data integration uh, with services that are already pre-integrated. And today, in particular, we will focus on the area of competence for myself, which is data integration. So I'm, I'm, I'm part of the product management team of the SAP data management portfolio. So that's where I come from, and uh, that's what I'm responsible for also. So I will uh, dig into detail about SAP data intelligence cloud more in particular. So first of all, why does data management matter for business process improvement? So, uh, if we are talking about enabling innovative and intelligent and sustainable processes, why does the management matter? Because uh, in order to deliver and implement such uh, uh, improved processes, you always need data because you need insights, right? So there's this virtuous loop that we want to streamline. So of taking data and transforming it into intelligent insights, because otherwise the data without producing insights would be trivial and then operationalizing those insights back into the business processes because otherwise insights, if, if they're not used for impacting a process, they would be useless right? and they would have no value. So we want to make sure that our customers can implement that virtuous loop of feeding insights into processes that then produce even more fine grains and intelligent data that can feed uh, a virtuous cycle. But we know that when enterprises embark on a journey to try to implement uh, more data-driven uh, and more intelligent processes, they always find various challenges that they must solve. So let me try and, and, and outline a small taxonomy of which are the most common and frequent issues that we see in, uh, in this kind of business transformation projects. First of all, integrating the data. So I'm talking about data integration here. So uh, we know that in order to, uh, to, to implement some, some kind of business process improvement, in many cases, you have to factor together different kinds of data. So think of those scenarios where you want to take some SAP data and join it with some, I don't know, streaming data, for example, coming from IoT sensors or some unstructured documents like PDF files, office documents, and so on. So with traditional technologies, that would mean uh, using typically two or three different tools, which is uh, already one factor where complexity starts to grow and explode to a level that can already become unmanageable very quickly. Then second aspect, the processing of the data. So how can you crunch that data in order to get some intelligent insights out of it? Most of the times we see uh, enterprises that uh, want to leverage different technologies in combination. So we have several use cases in these days where uh, some Part of the data is processed with Python, with uh, uh, all sorts of different kind of libraries. And then maybe some other data is processed with HANA in memory engines, right? Because it could be more convenient because we have built-in algorithms and, uh, and, uh, and, and so it would be easier to do that. So how can you make sure to orchestrate all of the different technologies that are already in place in many, in many cases in the IT landscape in a way that is fast enough, cost-effective, and again, keeps complexity to a manageable level. The third point, which is probably one of the most underestimated, is that in order to properly leverage your data to deliver some impact on your actual business processes, first to know, you need to know your data. So it looks like a stupid thing, but it's actually not, because if you look at the data landscapes of a, of a, of a common, uh, of a typical, let's say, enterprise landscape. In these days, there is nobody anymore in the uh, in the IT uh, departments and even on the business side that can be knowledgeable about all of the data which is available in terms of knowing the semantics, knowing the data models, even knowing that we have some data that 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 represents uh, certain business events, for example. Right. So, uh, democratizing access to the meaning of the data is really a key component of the picture because otherwise you will only be exploiting 
the subset of the data which is already known to your people. Then once you make some new data assets available uh, to your people and you allow them to know the existence of a certain data asset and its meaning, the immediate uh, question that comes uh, shortly afterwards is, is this data reliable enough to be used, for example, uh, in an algorithm that has to take autonomous decisions in a new process, right? So it's a, it's a degree of data quality that is very different than the data quality that we were requiring in traditional data warehouses, where we had people that were looking at the data before producing the, the report that was going to the CFO, and where we had enough time to fix the data, massage it, and control it, right? So in this case, the, the, uh, the demand in terms of data quality and reliability is much, much higher. And at the same time, uh, the, the, the degree of control that we have on the data is probably way, way lower. So it's a, it's a, it's a very uncomfortable situation. And uh, there's also a new and growing concern about how to deal with compliance. So we need to be able to, uh, to answer very easy questions like where in my landscape am I storing uh, personal information belonging to a certain citizen that, that has been asking for, for, for it. So the, the, the question itself is very simple. The answer is often very, very complex uh, due to the, uh, to, to the complexity of the landscapes themselves. And, uh, and, uh, and enabling uh, the organization to be able to keep track of that and to, and to uh, efficiently respond to those answers is another critical enabling factor for success. Finally, last but not least, uh, we know that uh, uh, all of the enterprises in these days are, are transitioning to the cloud. Uh, with different degrees of maturity, and as SAP is also strongly pushing. We are strongly inviting, let's say, our customer base to uh, speed up in, in, in moving to the cloud. So on one side, this is granting a much higher degree of flexibility and agility in terms of functional agility. But on the other side, what does that mean uh, to, uh, to the data landscape? So to your data analytics landscape, how can you still uh, enable end-to-end -end analytics across two or three different cloud providers plus your remaining uh, on-prem pieces, right? So that, that, that's, that's another big challenge. So if you put all of these challenges together, I think you get a fair picture of, of uh, why data management is so important uh, in these days, probably more than ever. SAP the Intelligence Cloud was conceived to solve I wouldn't say all, but at least the majority of those concerns, or, or you know, that's that's our aim at least. That's what we are working for. So, have one single unified solution that tackles all of those problems in one place, because it's not just a matter of providing the technical features to to solve those issues. It's also a matter of providing a simple enough and unified enough solution that 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 can solve it. Right and. Uh, we conceived the intelligence cloud across three different uh, main objectives. So one was to provide one single engine to integrate all of your data, structure the structure the streaming in one single place using the same kind of data pipeline. Second was to uh, provide an engine that is also able to orchestrate different kind of processing technologies with the very same data pipelines so that again, you can reduce complexity because you don't have to use two different things, one to integrate the data and another one to then process it, which is typically the, the most common approach these days as, as far as I've seen. And the third point, which is really which is really at the heart of ICP, we want to make sure that you're not just able to integrate data and produce some nice analytics on top of it, you also have to be able to use those analytics back in the transactional stack. So for example, uh, feeding some results back to uh, SAP S4HANA, back to SAP Ariba, or feeding some resu results back to SAP Cloud Integration that could then take uh, the data and orchestrate a full-blown transactional workflow engaging two or three different applications, right? It's also a valid use case that we support out of the box. And in order to implement that, we have built the product around three core capability pillars. First of all, an integration capability. Second, a data orchestration capability, so orchestrating different processing engines, and third, uh, a data catalog capability. This is also, a, I think, a differentiating approach compared to uh, a lot of our competition. In our view, the, the catalog is not, is not like a standalone disconnected piece of functionality. 
the catalog is really a functionality that has to be used in conjunction with your processing and integration uh, features because if you are not able to understand your data, to profile it, to check its quality, you will not be able to develop any meaningful uh, data pipeline and any meaningful data orchestration scenario. So in terms of uh, then diving deeper into the, uh, the, the integration capability, uh, we want to, to support with the same kind of commitment, uh, structured, unstructured and streaming here, I'm giving you a, a non-exhaustive summary of the various different kinds of sources that we do support out of the box. And I wanted to uh, uh, emphasize in particular uh, uh, that we are supporting both SAP and non-SAP and open source um, uh, sources. Uh, because for us, having an open platform that can uh, seamlessly talk also to, uh, non to the non-SAP side of the landscape uh, was a critical aspect that we, uh, that we committed. And then, uh, second pillar, the data orchestration aspect. So uh, the intelligence pipelines can be used to uh, run Python or, or Go or Node.js or R scripts. And they can be used to interact with uh, external TensorFlow cluster, external Apache Spark clusters, call out to any kind of API. And of course, also uh, they can be used to natively orchestrate HANA machine learning and other SAP uh, kind of engines that are supported also out of the box. And uh, in terms of deployment, then uh, SAP Data Intelligence is available in two main versions. The, 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 the strategic version is the SAP Data Intelligence Cloud, which is part of the SAP Business Technology Platform. For some niche use cases, we are also providing uh, a bring your own license version that you can buy and install on your own Kubernetes, even though uh, I must also emphasize the fact that the release cycle is definitely faster in the cloud version. And, uh, and let's say all of the innovation comes cloud first, as you can expect from SAP. Uh, in these days. Then, last but not least, the catalog. Uh, as I said, for us, it's really it's really um, 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 a fundamental capability of uh, of a data management uh, solution. So, catalog for us means uh, discovering uh, all of the data assets which are there in your landscape, uh, allowing data architects and all of the stakeholders to browse them to profile the data, to check uh, its main characteristics, to classify automatically the data. So uh, we do provide some out of the box uh, data classification mechanisms. And we do also provide the possibility to integrate uh, another product, which is called SAP Data Mapping and Protection by Big ID jointly on the intelligence to provide advanced uh, data classification techniques and be able to discover out of the box a lot of different kinds of data. And um, besides that, uh, you can use the intelligence to define the quality rules, uh, supporting uh, a similar set of, uh, of uh, functionality than what we used to support on-premise with information steward. You can build data quality uh, scorecards. Uh, you can use the intelligence for self-service data preparation. So that's uh, one of the areas of the product where we also address uh, end users on the business side with, uh, with an Excel-like UI that you can use for uh, for uh, fixing or changing the data assets. And finally, we do also support the data lineage in, uh, in the catalog. Uh, the data lineage is current, does currently have a more limited scope, but we are investing to, let's say, expand the number of sources on which we do also support lineage besides all the other uh, features. Data intelligence is now a quite mature product. So uh, it's been in the market since uh, 2017 when it was first called Data Hub. So in some older collaterals, you might still see that name. Perhaps it, uh, it was actually the same product that then we renamed to SAP Data Intelligence. Uh, we now have quite a wide customer base. Here you see some examples of, of customers that have shared their stories or that have won in the past year's SAP Innovation Awards with their projects. So uh, in particular, the SAP Innovation Awards decks are always very interesting to, uh, to look at because you can see uh, what kind of, uh, of, uh, of processes uh, the, uh, the product was used for. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's full of very interesting examples. And in terms of analyst recognitions, uh, the intelligence, given its wide functional scope, was actually used by SAP in, in several different magic quadrants by both Gartner and, and Forrester. So here I'm taking the Forrester wave for the enterprise of the fabric as an example, because 
the uh, the scope of the enterprise of the fabric wave by Forrester was very closely matching actually the product scope of the intelligence. So 90% of our answer was based on the intelligence and we, we were classified as clear leaders in this way. Uh, but the intelligence was also relevant for the Gartner MQ for the integration, the Gartner MQ for the quality, the Gartner MQ for the meta data management. And we're all leaders, by the way, in each of those products. In the same way that SAP Integration Suite is leader in the MQ for the IPAS product. So it's, uh, I think, very consistent rating from all of the analysts. Now, let's quickly come to the uh, product strategy. So what are the main topics that we are working on? So three main areas of, of, uh, of focus uh, from our side. First of all, uh, more tightly integrating SAP and Intelligence Cloud with the other SAP Business Technology Platform services. So providing more pre-built uh, integration and a seamless experience. Uh, second, unification uh, in terms of, uh, of um, let's say, uh, having a single solution, a one-stop shop for all of the management aspects. And third, hybrid deployments jointly with our on-premise tools. So. Uh, the, the BTP integration is probably, I would say, the number one uh, topic in these days in, in the product management team. So uh, we are working thoroughly to have uh, a tighter integration between the Intelligence Cloud and SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, SAP HANA Cloud and SAP Analytics Cloud. Uh, the current view is that the Intelligence Cloud in particular is the, is, is the data management gateway, as I would call it, across three uh, core aspects. So uh, whenever you need to integrate the SAP stack with any third-party data lake or third-party data warehouse, whenever you, you need to orchestrate uh, SAP engines jointly with any third-party engine like Python or R or other uh, kind of, uh, of third-party tools. And also third point, whenever you need to integrate SAP metadata with any third-party catalog. So the intelligence cloud is the answer across all of those three. Uh, dimensions. Uh, talking about the, the integration piece in particular, uh, if you have uh, looked or worked with uh, Data Warehouse Cloud, probably probably you have noticed that DWC, as, as we call it with its acronym, does also include a data integration capability already, which is called Dataflow. Right? And, and, and uh, that data integration capability is actually based on a subset of the intelligence cloud itself. So I wanted to mention this fact that uh, the intelligence cloud is not only available as a, as let, let's say, as a, as a full use uh, standalone service. It's also spread uh, in, uh, in in embedded pieces in other products like the warehouse cloud, right? And uh, and that's consistent with our vision. So we want to make sure that we have a unified engine whenever it comes to the integration, which is based on the intelligence, and then that engine can be consumed perhaps in different ways. Uh, and in the case of DWC, of course. If you are uh, a Data Warehouse Cloud customer and all you need to do is ingest data into Data Warehouse Cloud, we wanted to make sure that you don't have to use a second tool for that right? or, and, the, and that you don't have to pay any additional money for that, which is also another advantage. So it's, a, let's say, a limited, reduced scope of a data intelligence engine used just to feed data into uh, Data Warehouse Cloud. And uh, uh, in the future, you will see that the integration between the Intelligence Cloud and the Warehouse Cloud will get even further. So we plan to also integrate, uh, pre-integrate the catalog and, and have a much more tighter and more seamless experience across the two products. Then in terms of, uh, of uh, unification, here I, 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 I drew a, a quick and probably non-exhaustive summary of the various tools that we had in our on-premise portfolio. Uh, where we had an approach of specialized tools covering a subset of, uh, of the use cases. So we had data services and information steward for the integration and data governance on general purpose scenarios. Uh, HANA Smart Data Integration and HANA Smart Data Quality were doing the same things in HANA centric scenarios. Uh, SAT replication server was used for, uh, for integration with ABAP applications in particular, and so on. When we move to the cloud, we have as I said, a one-stop shop solution, just a single solution that will solve all of this, uh, let's say uh, uh, the equivalent scope of all of those tools and that's SAP the Intelligence Cloud. So it's a, uh, it's a clear vision, I think, from SAP to try and unify on, uh, 
on a, on a single on a single service. That does also cover the aspect of uh, orchestrating different processing engines, of course, which is something additional compared to what we were doing with uh, with our on-premise portfolio. Then talking again about the on-premise portfolio, uh, we uh, want to make sure that all of our customers that have invested heavily on those tools are not left behind. So. Uh, in other words, we want to make sure that if you have invested in uh, implementing the services ETL jobs, for example, uh, if you have built your business, uh, your data rules, uh, data policy rules in information steward, uh, if you are using SLT for, uh, for ABAP-based uh, replication and so on, we want to make sure that you can reuse all of those artifacts, all of those investments, uh, at least uh, until they're meaningful. So uh, meaning until there's something that you're still keeping on premise, you should be able to reuse all of the uh, tools that you had along with your on-premise applications. And uh, at the same time, extend those on-premise landscapes to the cloud, transitioning at your own pace. So that's, uh, let's say, our, our vision and our commitment in terms of what we want to uh, help you uh, doing. Uh, so, safeguarding all your past investments and uh, transitioning to the cloud. So start implementing cloud-based data management um, uh, projects at your own pace without having to rip and replace anything, without having to rework anything. So let's see how we, we uh, enabled you to do that, for example, with the services and information steward. So today, the intelligence cloud allows you to uh, uh, connect to uh, the services ETL jobs and, uh, and orchestrate them and also exchange data between an existing data services ETL job running on premise and uh, an intelligence pipeline running in the cloud. So for example, you can reuse an existing ETL jobs to, uh, to I don't know, read some data from an Oracle database or, or, or whatever. And then uh, with that data feed at the intelligence pipeline in the cloud that can merge it with some data coming from a Kafka broker, uh, run some Python and then feed some insights to, I don't know, SAP Analytics Cloud, for example. Okay, so that's the concept of reusing um, your existing uh, uh, wealth of, of ETL jobs that you might have on-premise and extend it into the cloud uh, with the intelligence cloud. Similarly, uh, for information stewards, uh, today the product has already enabled you to import all of the data quality rules that you have built in information steward and to import all the, all the Metapedia terms into the business glossary that we manage in SAP the Intelligence Cloud. And we want to bring those integrations even further in terms, of, uh, in terms of roadmap. So let's come to the roadmap then now. Uh, what we recently uh, um, released in the, in the past couple of, uh, of um, releases in, uh, in the Intelligence Cloud was improving the hybrid data management features. So in particular, um, improving the, the, the integration with the services that are just, that are just mentioned, sorry. And also we made quite a lot of work to reduce the, uh, uh, the overall total cost of ownership of the intelligence cloud in particular. So um, allowing customers to also start with very small implementations. So we reduced the minimum number of nodes over the intelligence cloud instance, which is now just three nodes. And uh, we uh, implemented hibernation features so that you can control the amount of time when the instance is active. You can control it exactly. And, uh, and uh, keep keeping in mind that we only charge for the active time. So the pricing for the intelligence cloud is extremely simple. So uh, it's just how many nodes you're running for how many hours. We don't charge for anything else. So we don't charge when the cluster is inactive. We don't charge for the bandwidth. We don't charge for the storage. We don't charge for the number of configured objects or the number of users. So it's a, it's a very simple to understand pricing. And, uh, and uh, by hibernating your cluster when you don't need it, in case in particular you, you are running prototypes or, uh, or non-productive instances or, uh, or instances that, that are only managing batches, for example, uh, this allows you to scale down the cost very nicely. And, uh, and we also released a lot of scaling uh, features so that you can now um, set your minimum and maximum number of nodes and, uh, and the cluster will breathe elastically between those two values according to the workloads that you, that you run uh, on that instance. Then in terms of integration with, uh, with the rest of the BTP, especially uh, the rest of the unified data analytics portfolio, 
Uh, we improved the integration with HANA Cloud. Now we support native connectivity to all of the tiers in HANA Cloud. So both the HANA Memory DB that was already there, of course, since the beginning, and HANA Data Lake DB, so the, uh, the Sybase IQ instance, which is managed within SAP HANA Cloud, and HANA Data Lake Files, which is the, uh, the, the cloud object so storage, uh, which is managed again in HANA, in HANA Cloud. In the data catalog, we have recently released and extended the public API that uh, allows our customers to integrate our catalog with any third party. That's already possible. Uh, so you can use those APIs to implement a project, to, to for example, to integrate uh, our metadata with uh, a third party um, uh, general purpose enterprise data catalog. And a nice synergy of having the data catalog uh, in the same product where we are providing also the data pipelining engine is that those integrations, uh, API-based integrations with a third-party catalog can be implemented also with a data pipeline itself. So you can use the intelligence itself to build your integration flows for the data that has to go to a third-party catalog. And then we made quite a lot of work to uh, improve the uh, enterprise-grade resiliency of the product with, uh, with the latest generation of operators, we call them uh, Gen 2 operators. So there's a, a nice blog by uh, one of our colleagues, Torsten Hapke, that was published just, just yesterday to uh, detail out those features and, uh, and providing also um, uh, automatic recovery mechanisms and uh, snapshot uh, mechanisms to make sure that in case of failures of a pod or a, or a machine, the pipeline can restart recovering exactly from uh, the place uh, where it, it was last seen. Let's say. So uh, making sure that they're fully resilient, which was a very important requirement, especially for uh, uh, pure data integration scenarios on structured data. Then going into the uh, into the upcoming innovations with the usual roadmap disclaimers that plans could change, but the main topics that we are working on are still, you know, we're working on the, the, the lines of, of the very same topics. So we will do some, we, will, uh, we, we plan to implement some further integration with uh, information steward. We plan to work further to reduce the overall total cost of ownership of, of running DI. In particular, we are working on uh, on a shared tenant version, so uh, with uh, possibly uh, giving our customers the option to subscribe to just uh, a single tenant of the intelligence in a cluster that is shared with other customers, so uh, providing perhaps a little bit lower SLA, but uh, with a lower entry point in terms of price, especially for uh, non-critical or non-productive uh, scenarios. We will integrate further with DWC and, and SAP Analytics Cloud. So one of the topics that, that we are looking at is uh, having a pre-integrated catalog across um, uh, SAP Data Intelligence, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, and SAP Analytics Cloud. So always talking about mid-term and, and uh, longer-term view, of course, here. So I'm not talking about something that is likely to come in a few weeks, but uh, this is what you know, we are working on in, uh, in, in terms of vision. And then, of course, we're also still working to uh, extend our connectivity to third parties. So we, we are not just focusing on, uh, on the SAP side of the house. We also want to make sure that the intelligence can fully be used and leveraged in contexts where you have many other non-SAP sources and targets. So uh, we have already delivered connectivity for Snowflake and we want to improve it and extend it. Uh, we want to implement connectivity with Teradata, with Postgres, and we have many of them in, uh, in roadmap. For, uh, for the uh, for the future releases, for data cataloging, we want to further extend uh, the public APIs, and we are working to improve the data lineage aspects in particular. Because at present, if you look at the current version of DI, not all of the sources that we can connect to are supported also for lineage. So lineage is supported on a subset of, uh, of the sources that we connect to, and we are working to make sure that we fill that gap and that uh, we, we greatly extend the reach uh, of our lineage functionality. Then in terms of even longer term vision and where we want to be in a few years time, uh, of course, uh, a very important topic for us is to make our data management layer even smarter. So we want to continue infusing and, and using machine learning for data management itself. That's a, that's a big topic, cross topic, I would say that, uh, that we are looking at. Uh, we will continue investing in, uh, in expanding the, the connectivity we have to third parties. 
uh, as well as uh, making uh, our connectivity to the SAP stack more and more seamless. So with the more pre-built uh, content also for SAP applications. So um, uh, you, you can uh, expect us to, uh, to uh, in the future, to deliver also uh, pre-built packages for, uh, for the most common let's say, uh, uh, scenarios and, uh, and an easier way any, any way to get uh, access to SAP data uh, through our data management tier. And we will continue to invest also in the data catalog space. That is, uh, it's a very strategic uh, topic for us. So, uh, uh, of course, we do not foresee our data catalog to, to become the one and only catalog that most of our customers will run in the enterprise. So we think that probably a common approach in the future will be uh, the, the hybrid data catalog approach, uh, but in, in, uh, in, in our view, uh, our data catalog should be uh, the best in class catalog for SAP data in particular, and, uh, and then it might be used also for non SAP data, or it might be used to feed metadata and, uh, and semantics to a third party catalog that you might prefer using for, uh, for other parts of your landscape. So both approaches uh, will be valid uh, in our view. And this is pretty much the content that I wanted to, uh, to cover today. I think that uh, now we can uh, uh, just wrap up with uh, some points for you to, uh, to take away in terms of uh, also having some links uh, to, to follow up if you want to know more about the SAP integration strategy overall and, uh, and learn more about the, uh, the technologies that I mentioned. And uh, I would move to the Q&A now, Minina. I, mean, you know, I don't know, um, of course, I was in presentation mode, so I haven't been looking at the, at the, at the questions on, 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 on YouTube. Yeah, no problem. And uh, of course, you were super busy. So thank you for the presentation <laughs> and all the um, brand new information. I was actually also busy uh, preparing some, some links and, and sharing them in chat <laughs> to blog posts to, uh, that you mentioned to, to the community Great. topic page and all this. Um, but yeah, I, I really highly encourage the audience that's watching right now to, to post any questions that you have in the chat. We have Sylvia with us um, for a couple of more minutes. So I would say take the opportunity uh, for now, I would have some questions. So, um, so Silvio, can Data Intelligence Cloud be used also to feed non-SAP data lakes and data warehouses? Uh, yeah, indeed. So, uh, let's say the, the integration with third parties and with uh, with the non-SAP side of the landscape is actually one of the uh, of the of the key pillars of the intelligence. I would say that probably. Um, more than 95% of our customers are using it also for that purpose, right? Because uh, uh, if, if you have very SAP-centric scenarios where all you need to do is, uh, is just to feed data into HANA Cloud and into Data Warehouse Cloud, probably you don't even need the intelligence today because you can achieve that with the integration features that we have embedded in those products. But in all of those scenarios where besides some SAP application, besides some SAP sources, you also have a non-SAP data lake, a non-SAP data warehouse, some non-SAP applications and non-SAP engines in the mix, then that's where the intelligence really shines and, and has its sweet spot, I would say. So it's definitely a, a, a key commitment for us. Thank you, Silvio. And you also mentioned um, um, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. Um, how does SAP Data Intelligence Cloud compare to the data flow functionality within SAP Data Warehouse Cloud? Yeah, so um, I, I quickly mentioned during my uh, my previous uh, talk that Dataflow is based on a subset of uh, of the intelligence in terms of uh, the the engine underneath. Even though the engine is the same, actually the the, the UI is completely different, and uh, those people among you that have used it probably have noticed it. So, Dataflow as a as a completely dedicated UI that is particularly geared that low code and no code kind of scenario. So it's, uh, it's, it's meant for uh, implementing simpler ETL use cases, and it's conceived around simplicity and ease of use with some functional limitations. So in Dataflow, you can only uh, do uh, relational transformations like joins and unions and some limited scripting. So Python with some NumPy and Pandas and, and nothing else basically. So no other custom libraries. And, uh, and it's really geared at ingesting data into the warehouse cloud only. So uh, that means that uh, whenever you, you have also other sources, whenever you need some more flexibility for doing more complex transformations, 
uh, or whenever you need to take data out of DWC, then it would be a use case rather for data intelligence for use. And for the future, something I haven't mentioned earlier, we actually foresee to, uh, to more tightly combine those two approaches in the very same service. So what you can expect, uh, again, for the middle and longer term is that that low-code, no-code UI will be provided also on top of standard for user intelligence so that people can choose if they want the simplified UI for implementing a simple use case because they're not developers, for example, or if they rather prefer to go for the full-blown pipeline model, a UI will have all the, all the functionalities. Great, thanks, Silvio. Um, there's a question in the chat from Michael. Do you have plans to match all connectivity source target options from data services within data intelligence? Uh, that's a very good question, actually. So in general, we, we are working to make sure that uh, the remaining gaps that we still have in the services would be fulfilled by the intelligence. So I guess you understood that the scope of the intelligence is different and, and much wider than the services. But when it comes to, uh, to pure ETL scenarios, the service still has some functionality that is not totally matched in the intelligence and we are working to, uh, uh, to fill it. So uh, that's definitely uh, among our intentions. That doesn't necessarily mean that we will mimic 100% uh, of the sources that we had in the services uh, back to the intelligence because the intelligence is much more geared at cloud and hybrid scenarios. So probably some of the, of the most legacy on-premise sources might not necessarily be ported or be covered in the intelligence cloud because they might just not have enough demand. Mm -hmm. That's, Thanks. by the way, one of the reasons why the services will still survive. So, uh, I mean, we are not deprecating the services. It's, it's guaranteed to be in maintenance until 2029. And there's another blog post where we, where we covered it because we think that if you still have some bits of, of landscape, which is on-premise, and you still need to do some uh, on-premise ETL, right? So the services is, is still fine to cover that and, uh, and will probably remain still for a few years. Yeah, no, it's good that you clarified that. And as you mentioned, there's another blog post that covers it. Um, you see the data intelligence team uh, is, is putting a lot of effort in making, making clear that you understand uh, everything that you need to know around SAP Data Intelligence Cloud. So check out the community topic page around this. Well, there's another good question in the chat from Pankaj. How effective is data intelligence in its current state to perform full-fledged ETL for data migration, we currently do using SAP data services. Okay, that's a very uh, good question and, uh, and not an easy one, by the way, to answer. <laughs> so uh, the, the reality is that uh, the, the intelligence is already, is already uh, mature, I would say, to cover ETL use cases in terms of resiliency, especially with, uh, with the recent innovations that we delivered. So, you can use it for complex data integration scenarios. When it comes to data migration projects, in particular, if you're talking about complex S4 migrations, there are several other features that you will need besides just ETL, right? So, and, uh, and, uh, so for those ones, we do have other solutions in our portfolio, like uh, Cinity Cloud, the advanced data migration solution by Cinity, uh, which are geared specifically for data migration projects. So uh, the simple answer would be, uh, yes, we can do ETL with the intelligence, but ETL alone does not cover the full scope of a data migration project. So data migration will also require you something more than just ETL. Thank you, Silvio. Yeah, and with that, I would say, unless there's any other questions that you'd like to get addressed. So looking here at the audience watching, um, See if I see you typing. Not, I don't see. I don't see that feature. If anyone is typing, but in case you do, uh, you might want to hurry up so I can see the question and I can address it with Silvio. Otherwise, um, yeah, we'll definitely have another one. Probably, um, not sure if it's with you, Silvio. I don't want to put you on the spot and say, Silvio, come back. It'll be again. my pleasure to uh, <laughs> to be back in another SAP community call. And anyway, Minina, if, if anybody has has other questions that can pop up later, right? When uh, after a coffee, for example, or something, feel free to reach out to us also offline. So uh, we are available, of course, and okay. uh, happy to uh, to respond to to your doubts if we can. <laughs> that sounds good. 
Thank you, Sylvia. Thanks for the offer. And Welcome. thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let us know. Give us a thumbs up or just post a comment. We'll, we're looking forward to hear from you. Have a good rest of day. Bye, everyone. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.